This tutorial is about monohybrid genetic crosses, the inheritance of a single gene with two alleles. So here's an example. Let's consider tungrolin in humans. It's controlled by one gene with two alleles. Now if you remember, we normally represent genes using a letter from the alphabet. So here, tongue rolling, we'll use the letter T to represent this gene. And capital letters are normally used to represent dominant alleles and lowercase letters for recessive alleles. So we'll use a capital T to represent somebody who can roll their tongue and a lowercase T for somebody who can't. So here's an example of a past exam question. Using a genetic diagram, show the expected phenotype ratio between a homozygous dominant individual and a homozygous recessive individual. There's a certain formula that you need to use to lay out your genetic crosses and if you follow this set formula uh, pattern all the time, well then you will gain the maximum marks in your exam. So first of all, set out your parental phenotypes, then the parental genotypes, the genotypes of the gametes the parents can make, and then use a Punnett square to represent the uh, genotypes you would expect in the F1 generation, and then use that to work out the expected phenotype ratio for the F1 generation. So let's look at that past exam question again. Using a genetic diagram, show the expected phenotype ratio between a homozygous dominant individual and a homozygous recessive individual. So first of all, what you should do is lay out the subheadings like is shown on the screen. Now, in the exam question, you're given information to work out what the parental genotypes are. So the first parent they told you was homozygous dominant. So that's shown here on the left by two capital T's. Homozygous, remember, means that the individual has inherited the same alleles from each parent. So in this case, a capital T for tongue rolling allele from each parent. And the second parent was homozygous recessive. So again, inherited two of the same allele from each parent, but in this case, the, the lowercase t. So from that, we can work backwards and work out the parental phenotypes. So the parent with the two large t's is a tongue roller. And if you've inherited two small t's, well, then you are a non-tongue roller. So next line is for the gamete genotypes. Remember, you should always display the gamete genotypes in circles. So in this case, each parent can make two different gametes, but each containing the same allele. So the tongue rolling parent can make a gamete with a large T present and the non rolling parent can make gametes with the small T present. So if you remember how to set out a Punnett square, you set it out like this, showing the gametes of one parent on the top row and the gametes of the second parent in the first column. You should never mix up the gametes. You should always have the gametes of the same parent on either the top row or in this first column. You shouldn't mix them up. And then in each box, you show the genotypes that you would expect if the gamete um, here from this parent was to fuse with this gamete of this parent. For example, the offspring genotype would have large T, small T. So in that case, because tongue rolling, the large T is the dominant allele, this offspring would in fact be able to roll their tongue. And you can see from the Punnett square that in fact all of the offspring would be able to roll their tongue because they would all end up with the same genotype, large T, small T. So in this case, the phenotype ratio is one to zero tongue roller to non roller, but it would be more appropriate to say 100% of the offspring were tongue rollers.